Okay, next thing off of the truck, simply because it's in the way and needs to get out of the truck before I get everything else out, is this guy, which I kind of made a little teaser of last video or a video ago or whenever. This is the CDC, control data that is, CDC 1774 mini computer. And we'll show you the tag once again. There we go. And yeah, this really is a tall rack. It's a seven and a half foot, or no, it's not, it might, well, it's over six and a half feet, I think. Not seven and a half, but it's six and a half or a smidge higher. It's a big boy. And this is a 1700 series machine. Yes, CDC did make mini computers, and they made them with nice panels. The 1700 series is uh, basically early to mid 60s. Um, the original one was the 1704 and then the uh, 1706, I believe. And uh, the peripherals were also 1700 series. This one is a 1774, which was the follow up or second generation. Why they skipped that many numbers, I don't know. I guess they all the peripherals. There was a follow-up to this called the 1784, which I'll make a video of 1784s at some point. And the line kind of ended with the Cyber 18. That's the mini computer that uh, is in that 2551 network processor unit. In any case, this is the 1774, which is the late 60s spin on the architecture. This particular one, I think, is... Got date codes of around 1971, so it's a fairly late machine in the line. Serial number is 701. So I don't know how many they made in total, but it just I get the feeling that's a that's a pretty high serial number for these things. But uh, yeah, it does kind of show you that that it wasn't all deck. It, it wasn't all deck HP and Data General back in the uh the late 60s and the 60s and the uh very early 70s there were a lot of players and the 1700 series uh found a lot of use in process control anyway let's look at the panel i'm sorry i can't open this cool blue smoked smoked uh plexiglass i need to pick that it's not a ch751 um and i'm no good at picking locks but sorry for the uh Reflections, but you can see we got the register select, we got a speed knob, those are always fun. Real switches. I mean, look at those. Those are mil spec switches. None of this garbage that DG or uh, DEC used. Actually, DG used pretty good CNKs um, early on, but they went to that plastic garbage later. But oh, DEC switches. Awful, awful. These are real switches. See a real panel, real blinking lights. All the fun stuff. This would have had a stainless steel desk, which unfortunately I do not have. I'm going to have to fabricate one. Um, there were some at this place where I got this. I didn't know what they were at the time. And unfortunately I did not grab a shelf. Anyway, let's open this up. There's a little catch somewhere here. Oh, here we go. Well, the first thing you see here is some uh, missing <laughs> missing things. This is the core memory. And uh, I did take them out for safety. That's a core box. These, I think, are standard to the 1700 line. And uh, I believe they're 4K boxes. And there are four in the front and four in the back. Here are the cards. And, of course, the blower. Cards are interesting. This is a uh, uh, integrated circuit device or machine. Let's see if I can pull out a card that has actual ICs, and it looks like I do. Once again, I'm not afraid of BSD today because it is. Well, you can probably hear the rain in the background. Let's take a look here. Gold-plated pins. Now uh, you'll notice on these. Maybe you can see them. Maybe you can't. But the chips are all called Interbrid, and that was, I think, a CDC name for their line of chips it's kind of weird because it doesn't really last too long now if you ask me a lot of these look like motorola chips especially with that sc number i think sc signified a uh 
sort of a special line custom Motorola chip. Uh, and they just kind of look, look circa 1970s Motorola. Why they flared the leads out a little bit, I don't know. But you can see, yeah, it's not the standard spacing. But uh, yeah, lots of ICs in this guy. And we're going to put this back. And uh, there we go. Actually managed to get it back. And it looks pretty complete, actually. Once I get these guys plugged in, it looks like it looks pretty complete, other than the shelf, of course. And I guess I should get a filter for there. But uh, one thing you probably noticed, what is all this about? Yeah, that's how the CDC ran these things, and yeah, it sticks out. Apparently, I do, and I do not have the side panels for this, but apparently the side panels really do stick out about two or three inches to accommodate for this mess. And you can see probably over the years being smushed like that and having, you know, the things moved around, yeah, the ribbon cable starts to fall apart. It looks like it's, it's uh, only the integrity of the actual ribbonness is affected because it looks like the actual wires are okay. Um, but yeah, it's like that on the other side too. Dumb, dumb, dumb design. All right, let's move to the back. You can see here the, uh, the four other cubes. This one was a loaded machine. It actually had all eight cubes installed. Down here we can see all the stickers that say what this thing is, and indeed it is uh, serial number 701 down there. And uh, yeah, once again, I don't know if you can see, sorry about the light, but uh, yeah, it's it's got the usual uh, CDC rat's nest of wire wrap. Uh, okay, the one unfun thing about this, and maybe we can see, can you see? Yeah, 400 hertz, 400 hertz. So this guy is not a plug in the wall, even though, even though it looks like it. You plug this in the wall and bad things happen. <laughs> um, now there is this here. I think these were the power supplies. And believe it or not, I think I actually have the power supplies. They were removed from the machine when I got this machine. This it came from the same pile of CDC stuff. And I do have some power supplies which I think go with this. I do have uh, full maintenance stocks on this which is really handy. And this is the I.O. In fact, you know what? Just to get better light, maybe, I'm going to look from this end. Well, it's not so much better light. Um, <laughs> but this is the AQ bus. It's very expensive military-style connectors. CDC love mil-spec stuff. And uh, this is, well, how you communicated with uh, all your peripherals. Now, I don't have a whole lot of peripherals, unfortunately. I have some. Um, it'll be tough. So I don't know how useful this machine will ever really be. Um, th and the chances of me finding 1700 series peripherals from the early days, from the from the 60s, uh, th th that's going to be slim. That's going to be real slim. So yeah, at this point, can't even really uh, can't even really hook up a uh, teletype to it. Now I do have uh, the follow-up to this machine, the 1784, and I've got plenty of goodies for that. But 1774 here, well, we're just going to have to, well, pray that we find some goodies. So there, there we have it. Oh, I should uh, look at the back plane here, if you can see. Back plane, yep, paper pin, paper pins. Why are they a pain in the neck? You can kind of uh, push the pin in and pray that it sticks. So there we have it, 1774, 16-bit mini computer from Control Data. A uh, pretty successful design, even though most people really haven't even heard of it. Um, they made a fair amount of them, quite a lot of them, uh, used a lot in the process control industry. So uh, yeah, uh, this will be a project for a later day. Needs uh, needs some work. It's not too bad. It's got a, it's got some dents and rust and stuff like that but in general it's okay all right hope you like this video i'm still emptying the truck maybe leave a like
maybe subscribe, 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 and uh, leave a comment, especially if you know where I can find some early 1700s peripherals. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.